Okay, it's four o'clock and we're gonna go ahead and get started on our um, last grad talks of our series. And um, I'm gonna kind of start with introductions first. So um, welcome everybody to our Gates Millennium Scholars API ASF uh, webinar final uh, one of the series on mathematics. And um, to uh, start with, we're going to do a, a little brief introduction of the staff. I'm going to go ahead and start with me, even though a little bit out of sequence of the pictures, but I'm Arianne Martin. I am a program manager here at GMS API ASF, sorry. And I've been with the uh, program for just about three years. Will Angela next? Hi everyone, um, my name is Leangelo. Um, I'm a program assistant here at um, the Gates Millennium Scholars here at um, API ASF. I've been here, it will be two years, sometime in February, but yeah, really excited to hear um, from everyone on the, um, on the webinar. Hold on, Melissa, I can unmute you, go ahead. Oh. Okay. We're good. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Melissa May. Uh, I'm a program manager here at GMS API ASF. Um, been part of the team for a little over three years now, and I'm really excited uh, for the conversations and the information that is about to come out of this wonderful webinar. Okay, thank you. I'm also going to introduce Colin Yudoshi, who is our campus engagement manager for the Northeast region. Unfortunately, she could not be with us today, but she is a member of our team. I'm going to go over the overview of the webinar. Okay. So just to give an idea of what's going to go on for the uh, next you know, hour or so, um, we're going to do a Fontulade and Gates Millennium Scholars program, kind of how they work, and we're going to have our wonderful Melissa May kind of talk a little bit more about that. Then we're going to have our admissions representative presentation from our uh, wonderful Jonathan Harper from American University here in Washington, D.C. Just wave mm -hmm. to everybody. <laughs> then we're going to get a great Gates Millennium Scholar Scholar perspective from Daylene Dawn, who's a second year master's student at Georgetown University. So a little bit of a shout out to some of our local universities here. And so we'll kind of get to look, you know a little bit about her uh, program and how she got into that and um, definitely after that, we're going to have uh, Q&A. Um, you can do that if you want to through the, um, our little webinar here, or if you want to also do the questions in the chat, feel free to go ahead and put your questions in the chat, and then we will um, kind of uh, let everybody know and uh, read that uh, question so that um, our folks can answer that as well. So um, we're going to have Melissa. So Melissa, you're up. Okay, well, welcome again um, to our great webinar, and thanks, Arianne, for that introduction. Um, so just a few things that I'm going to go over about your GMS award as it functions at the graduate level compared to the undergraduate level. Um, at the undergraduate level, um, GMS covers your entire cost of attendance, whereas at the graduate level, GMS has a cap. Um, so the cap uh, as of now is approximately 46,000 at private institutions and 40,000 at public institutions. Um, so what this means is a lot of GMS scholars will look for ways to offset the costs um, of their living expenses or any additional expenses they have beyond the graduate cap. Um, so that also means that you have to be really mindful of the location that you choose for your graduate program. Um, so look at cost of living in different cities. Um, going to school in New York City or in San Francisco might be different than going to school in Atlanta or in Chicago. So make sure that you kind of do an analysis of you know, what a cost of living or what um, food and any other uh, transportation, anything else that you might need to spend money on. Uh, make sure that you look into those things as well, um, keeping in mind that there is this graduate cap. Um, and then in terms of summer funding, um, this functions a little bit differently at the graduate level than at the undergraduate level as well. Um, at the graduate level, if you don't use all of the funds within the cap, um, then whatever is left over, you're able to use uh, for summer. So if you need to take an extra class over the summer and you have some funds left over, then you're eligible to use those funds at that time. Um, you're also considered an independent when you're completing your FAFSA. So just as a graduate school applicant, um, something to be aware of as well. Um, 
You'll also need to make sure that with GMS you submit your graduate program inquiry form um, because we know that GMS only covers uh, seven graduate fields, mathematics being one of them. Um, we just want to make sure that the program that you select um, is fundable through GMS. So that form is located under the profile picture on your student portal. So make sure that you submit one of those. Um, the priority deadline for submitting that form is March 1st, but we'll also accept them after that deadline on a rolling basis. Um, and then to request your funding, you'll follow the same process that you did at the undergraduate level. So we'll reach out uh, at the beginning of the school year or the summer before, um, and then you'll just have to request your funding on the student portal, and your financial aid officer will have to verify that request, and then we'll be able to start processing your funds. Um, if any questions come up throughout the whole application process or um, in requesting your funding, feel free to email us at gms at apiasf.org. And that's it. Thanks. Thank you, Melissa. Always yeah. good information. So next we have um, Jonathan Harper, who's the Assistant Director of Graduate Enrollment at American University. Um, he uh, worked for Enrollment Division for the College of Arts and Sciences since 2007. He holds a MFA in Creative Writing from American University and is the author of the short story collection Daydreamers which was Kirkus Review's Indie Book of the Year for 2015. And he's gonna talk a little bit about the process for a graduate school. So Jonathan, take it away. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me and thank you for my little moment of shameless self-promotion. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, again, my name is Jonathan Harper and I do work with the Graduate Enrollment Management Office for AU's College of Arts and Sciences. And I just wanna give you a few kind of uh, tidbits on kind of compiling your application. Uh, I, I know that there's a possibility you're applying to multiple schools, but uh, I will be kind of using us as the main example. Uh, so first of all, uh, my office, uh, the College of Arts and Sciences in general, has 17 graduate departments, each with multiple programs. So my office is sort of the center point for over 50 PhD, master's, and certificate programs. There's like four of us, we're very busy. <laughs> but we do sort of strive to be sort of a central uh, kind of resource for you uh, while you're trying to get information and go through the application process. So I, I think it's always important that when you are engaging with universities, don't just look at the program pages, but also learn about your admissions office and uh, the graduate enrollment team, because we will also uh, be holding open houses, events, campus visits, we'll be doing information sessions, and we'll be the ones physically processing your application uh, before it goes to the department for review. Uh, I do have a few tidbits, um, uh, but just to kind of start, uh, when you were talking about graduate school in particular, there's, there's a very big difference uh, between how you're applying. When you were applying to undergrad, you were kind of uh, engaging with a greater institution and you were giving more of a general overview of yourself as a potential student. Where when you're transferring into a specific graduate program, such as a mathematics program, you are now applying to a very unique, specific graduate program within a graduate department, within a larger overhead of a university. So it's actually the mathematics professors who read and review your files and make the decisions on who's coming in to join their cohorts. So um, that's just kind of to start off on the next screen. Uh, <clears throat> I have three. I have three, three screens. So next screen, uh, uh, just a very quick list of, of the kind of things you'll be compiling. Uh, we will always your grad enrollment management staffs will usually have information on these on their website. Uh, these are the kind of things that you're usually asked for. For us, it's, of course, it's transcripts. We generally need to see all transcripts that, uh, from a degree-seeking uh, university. Uh, we usually ask for two letters of recommendation from master's students, and those should come from people who can, most importantly, talk about your ability to succeed in the very specific field you are applying into. Uh, test scores. Uh, test scores are kind of changing these days, but GREs are still required for a lot of STEM programs, mathematics included. Uh, while AU does not have a minimum cutoff, 
uh, we do obviously look for higher quantitative scores. Uh, some programs ask for writing samples, mathematics does not usually, <laughs> so you can skip that. And then sometimes you'll have an optional essay section. Um, on the next screen, uh, I have a little kind of just kind of a tidbit about the statement of purpose, which is what I feel is actually the most important component of your application. Uh, because this is where you're actually making uh, a case for where you belong within the specific programs you're applying to. And if you're applying to five or six universities, you really should be writing five or six unique statements. We usually have uh, industry standards about a thousand word limit. It does change from program to program, so you always want to check their websites. And a statement can be broken down into two minor statements. Why I want you, why you want me, why I want to attend your program, why your program should admit me. It's kind of like a first date. We're just looking to see if we're compatible. Don't need to hear about your childhood. Really don't. But we do want to hear about what kind of experiences, uh, kind of professional experiences, qualifications, you know, everything that you have built that will be an asset within this program. And because it's a first date, we want you to kind of talk about us. It's kind of about us too. So we want to hear about how we're going to be working with you as well. Uh, one of the big things I always mention is uh, mention specific faculty members you want to work with uh, because those faculty uh, members will be one of the first you will pull to look at your file. So last thing I kind of have here on the statement of purpose, because again, it's what I consider the most important part, is uh, I have a formula for this. Uh, three points, goals, experience, and the program you're applying to. And these are the three basic points that we're trying to make when we're applying, uh, when we're writing a statement. The goals, and not only are these all unique items, but they all have to connect in with each other and make sense with each other. So goals, why am I applying to this program? What am I hoping to do and accomplish in this field? What life experiences do I have that already support those goals? What have I already been doing with my life that would show that I'm building up towards that? And then what experiences propel me into this specific program? How do my qualifications make me qualified for this particular program? What are the specific program features, the research opportunities, the professors you want to work with? What are our uh, internship opportunities? What are everything that we have to offer that's going to help you accomplish those goals? And when you're able to connect all those dots, you really have effectively answered those two initial statements, why I want you, why you want me. And it gives you a chance to highlight your, your strengths and your assets. <clears throat> um, I think that's pretty much it I have in the statement of purpose. And of course, uh, I'm happy to answer any more questions about the application process in general. Thank you, Jonathan. So yes, let's pause for a few seconds to oh. see if um, there's any specific questions for Jonathan before we move on to our scholar uh, speaker. Any questions about um, graduate admissions? And I don't see anybody on the chat. Anybody? I guess I did that good of a job. I was just going to say, Jonathan, you must have done an absolutely perfect job. Um, but of course, um, you know, after we do the scholar speaker portion there, you know, if you do, because questions could come about as you're listening uh, to our next speaker, um, still feel free to do that. So it's not like we're going to close the door completely right now, but just want to at least open it for right now. So, hang on, Jonathan, you, you might get a question or two you know, in a little bit, so, but, but thank you. Great, all right. So now that we kind of heard from our, you know, a professional in the graduate area, let's kind of get a perspective from actually a current GMS scholar that is actually currently doing her mathematics uh, master's uh, locally. So we have Gia Yon, who is a, um, she originally was an international business and finance major for her undergraduate, and now she's currently in her master's program in Georgetown University in uh, DC, and is going to be getting her, her master's in 2019, so very shortly. So Gia, are you on? Uh, yes, I am. Oh, awesome. Um, Great. 
Well, thank you and welcome for giving our perspective. So to help us with this conversation, I'm going to go ahead and ask you a, a few questions just to get the conversation going. And, and, and our scholars that are on, please feel free if you have additional questions. Because now we have a live student who is actually doing a mathematics graduate program. So what, mo what motivates you to pursue a mathematics graduate degree and what continues, continues to motivate you? Well, actually, um, the thing is, I wasn't a math major for four, uh, before, you know, I get my master's degree. And so uh, usually in, you know, when I was back, when I was in undergrad, uh, I majored in international business and finance, which is a very different field from mathematics, in which, you know, you have pure math mathematics, and then you also have the route of applied mathematics which uh, you do most of, you know, data science slash data analysis work that uh, we, we are doing. And so, uh, and so before, before, you know, before taking that while, um, I wasn't very satisfied uh, regarding, you know, um, what I have uh, in terms of, in terms of, you know, what my major is going to lead me in the future. Uh, in this case, um, international business and finance, uh, if, um, if I take that while uh, most people that graduate in that while uh, becomes, you know, they were in either, you know, Wall Street or, uh, or uh, doing international trade, trade or, you know, doing, um, doing most of, you know, financial consulting. And I don't want to take that well. So I wanted to kind of explore more into, you know, my other options, uh, which, you know, uh, thankfully um, for uh, math and stats, you get, you get kind of an exposure towards, you know, with the background, uh, with the background, you know, statistics regarding, uh, regarding, you know, um, how, how, you know, different operation works. Uh, there's also, you know, mathematics behind, you know, that portion of, uh, that portion of math, as in that portion of the field. And also, you know, you also get exposure to, you know, um, other sciences and also, uh, also physics and also, you know, mostly uh, for what my degree is in, uh, it's mainly in, you know, data science and, and you know, uh, applied mathematics. And so uh, it kind of, you know, feeds me an interest into, you know, uh, artificial intelligence and that that path itself and also into, uh, into you know, cloud computing also, uh, which, which uh, it sounds complicated, but when, when you, you know, when you study it, it's not. So uh, I think, I think when, when you're when you're interested in a subject and then you know you spend time in it, um, it it really it really need these two you know uh, better results, and also the thing with that is um, it's just that uh, with with you know most of most of what I'm doing right now, uh, it's not a sin. As in what I have learned in my undergrad, um, there's no background in mathematics in general. I don't have any backgrounds in mathematics in undergrad uh, for, for business school. Um, there's no requirements for math. So basically after calculus one, um, I'm literally you know, done with mathematics requirement. And so for master's degree, uh, what they wanted is, you know, uh, they have, you know, different requirements for uh, admissions. And if you wanted to, you know, go into, uh, go into that route, you have to, you know, at least meet the uh, minimum requirements. And it's better to kind of talk to uh, some of your uh, mathematics professors if you wanted to, you know, go into that route and, you know, see what their recommended classes were uh, regarding, you know, if you wanted to uh, pursue uh, more into uh, more into the math major, and so uh, and so uh, they they recommended to me at least uh, to take uh, some calculus course up to uh, up to multivariable calculus and uh, linear algebra, and also this uh, also additional you know um, 
real analysis courses that uh, that you know we are recommended to take. But, but I know that I know that you know it takes some time. But then you you kind of need to plan the whole thing. And so when when I do my planning, I kind of take probably um, a year or two years to plan for my degree. And you know just take you know a few as in the necessary classes to kind of you know get yourself familiar with the subject and then go into that world and so that's my recommendation oh that's great um i'm going to ask another question again to you know continue this conversation and then after that after your answer i'm going to pause to see if our scholars have some additional questions but what is your long-term career or academic goal i think that um well, for for now, I'm kind of you know deciding between the different routes because right now you know I have I have choices, so uh, so I wanted to kind of lean toward uh, data science in general and data data analysis, and that kind of would kind of appeals to me because um, because I really do do like machine learning. It's kind of so much you know um, it's it's kind of leading towards, you know, what, uh, what, what, you know, higher technologies are, you know, doing, and, you know, it also leads to, you know, technological innovation in, in that type of way. And so uh, that's one route that I could take. The other route uh, that I'm considering that's kind of mainly impacted by, uh, by my previous experience is uh, when is uh, the actuarial route in which you know you calculate uh, you calculate the um, the insurance rates of you know of companies and also people. And I think and I think um, and I think that that's not that's not you know the main focus of uh, of this program in general. But um, but I think I think that you know. I'm kind of influenced by both my experience and you know uh, what the program has taught me, and so uh, I'm I'm grateful for that. Great, thank you. Um, like I said, I'm going to take a moment to see if there's any questions, and it's even okay if you don't want to do it. Uh, I know I don't like the sound of my voice, so if you also don't like the sound of your voice and you rather just uh, write the question in our chat please feel free to do that and then we can, you know, go ahead and, and read it um, so that everybody can, um, you know, have the question and then we can answer it. So I'm um, going to take a few seconds to see if we have any any questions point for either Jonathan or Dia, either, either one. And I'm looking at our chat just in case you guys are fast typers and seeing if there's anything there. Now, you know, Gia, we have an MS in data science program at AU, so if you want to defect, come talk to me. <laughs> well, well, I'm, don't well, tell anyone I said that, though. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> so, uh, um, <laughs> you're speechless. I know. I, I like my school. Oh. It it gives it gives me it it gives me a lot of you know resources that I don't think I can I receive but I did receive and so uh and so yes um uh, and so and so yes uh I'm I'm satisfied with something now uh, <laughs> if if you if you know you could if you know you could kind of convince me to do a PhD. <laughs> in in the future, uh, in less than two years, I might reconsider that one. Okay. But in the meantime, uh, yes, uh, I'm done. That is excellent. Um, well, let me ask you another question. Um, let's see, what are some of your strategies to be successful? Uh, I think I think in the main. Uh, the main thing with that is, um, first of all, you do need to, you know, uh, 
do some research regarding the program. Um, and sec secondly, I think I think because you know most of my professors they have uh, office hours right before class, and so uh, and so sometimes you know uh, you kind of you kind of needed to uh, pick your professor's brain uh, within you know the duration of the office hours, and you have you know you have to uh, you have to um, do an additional work. Uh, after after you're done with office hours and so i think i think uh what what you know what the main thing that you needed to do is just to kind of keep having you know a learning mindset in general in which you know you wanted to learn more than what you have learned yesterday and so i think i think that's that's the kind of mindset that that I have right now because uh, in general, if you don't if you don't like you know what you're doing, then then in general this program might be you know very stressful uh, in in the long run. And if you and if you you know keep the mindset that oh uh, if you can't achieve uh, a certain thing uh, right now. And you tried it, you know. Again, I mean, the the professors are really helpful. In in general, uh, if you if you pick, um, well, in Georgetown, actually, I, I'm not sure in other institutions, but in Georgetown, uh, they they're very helpful in in that in that we in that we respect. And so, uh, if you wanted to uh, kind of um, kind of succeed in that program, I think first of all. Uh, you do need it to apply what you learn uh, in the workforce and also, you know, kind of keep a mindset that, oh, after you're going to graduate from this program, you're going to, you know, uh, do, do your own job of learning more so that, you know, you gain more experience and you gain, you know, more, more knowledge in that way. And so I think, I think that's, that's a good, that's a good, you know, ability that you need it to have in this program to kind of keep yourself going and keep yourself you know going because in the long run if you don't like you know what you're doing then then i i think this this is a very stress, stressful program and and also uh and also if you if you just wanted to you know to kind of kind of you know do a project that you're interested in then this there's also professors that could help you in that in that case. So uh, yes, yes, professors are you know a good resource, and also uh, and also you know job experiences. Um, you you need to you know gain gain more in that in that uh, aspect to kind of get yourself familiar. Ray, that's some good advice in there too, which is wonderful. Um, any, any questions out there? Just gonna get it out there. Any, anything out there? We're a small group. Don't need to be shy. <laughs> I have a quick question, um, maybe for Jonathan. Um, what sort of industries or careers do you see a lot of graduates going into? <laughs> well, I mean, are we talking specifically in, in this, in the math field? Or are we talking in STEM all around? Yeah, yeah, I think. So I, um, I, I think. Maybe it, for math, for this. For math, okay. Uh, well, I, I mean, in that case, uh, we've kind of fused our mathematics program, not just with number theory, but also with a new information security track. So we're actually developing pretty good leads, uh, not just into the consulting realms, uh, and sort of the analytics realms, we're also moving more towards uh, corporate security management, fusing it in kind of computer science, kind of giving some of that really hard number theory that goes into technology. So, and I think the, one of our biggest places that we're actually moving into outside of the federal government has been kind of that uh, tech triangle that's kind of sprouted up in Northern Virginia. So, yeah. <laughs> It's a very diverse, wonderful field, and there's a lot of options for it. Thanks. Yeah. Russell, thank you, Jonathan. And yay, we got a question. 
So okay. Former scholars. So it's actually um, for Gia. What is what is what the area of math is the biggest challenge for you? Any tips on how to get through it? Uh, okay. Um, I think I think that for for me though, um, the the thing is, I think. I think that you know when when you get to this level of uh this level of you know the standard of level four math, uh you tend to you know run into very long you know proofs and equations that uh that you do uh that that you know professors have you have you do in in class to kind of you know get get you in you know this mindset that oh. Oh, we don't just we don't just you know use a function to get what we want. Um, actually, we there's you know math behind that function, and we don't want you to use that function. And so, uh, and so professors tend to you know get us into you know, long proofs, and uh, and you know and you know you have to you know summation signs, and then you also have to uh, have the I'm not sure if it appears in your uh, in your in in your field, but then there's also the uh, the products the product summations. Um, I think I think the main thing is kind of uh, to to uh, to first do some research about it. Uh, there, there's there's a lot of res resources uh, online. And so when, when you do your resource and you still don't understand things, then uh, you kind of present, I say you kind of uh, have to contact your professors about, oh, this is the resource that um, you know that I'm looking at. Uh, this is what you have explained to me in class. Uh, this is also uh, what I have concluded, but I'm not sure if this is what you wanted. Uh, professors in, in that sense are able to, you know, get you back on the right track in terms of, you know, how you think about, you know, certain things. And I think, and I think uh, for me, um, for me in general, that and, you know, the coding aspect are, you know, my biggest chance because uh, before I went into this program, I didn't know that I had to, you know, uh, do hard coding. As in, as in, as in for me, I don't think that math and, you know, computer science in general are overlapping in that sense. Well, at least, at least apply, as in, at least, you know, apply math. Um, I don't, I don't think they are overlapping in that sense, but, but they are right now in this case. And so, um, and so I think, I think, you know, kind of doing your own research and kind of, you know, uh, kind of uh, get get feedbacks from professors and also, you know, emailing them to, you know, kind of see, see where you are and, you know, and kind of get, get that your problem solved. I think that's, 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 you know, one of the, you know, biggest tip that I could give you. Well, whatever you want to do, right? And you need to Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, any other questions? For either one of our special, oh, hold on. From either, for either one of our special speakers today? Going once, going twice, three times, one more just in case. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like we probably um, said everything we need to say. And um, thank you so much for being part of our um, webinar here. So I want to be a huge thank you to my colleagues, as well as to uh, Jonathan Harper from American University and Gia, yeah, our, our wonderful scholar, and good luck to you and as you finish up your last semester um, at Georgetown. Uh, we 
again, have this as a recording. So if you do know of other scholars who are interested but just couldn't get on the webinar today, um, we'll get this um, on the recording. We could you know, send it out and you can find it. Uh, but again, thank you so much and good luck to everybody. And uh, hope we'll see you on another webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ariane. Have a good day, everyone.